Oh, sugar honey ice tea. It's the EAC show. February 14th is a day throughout the country where people go out to eat, hang out with significant others, buy chocolate, buy candy, flowers, and tell everybody happy St. Valentine's Day. For this community, February 14th is a day of remembrance, a day when 17 innocent lives are taken to us way too soon. Here at the EAC show, we are going to dedicate today's show to those 17 lives and their family members. We're going to pray and pass our love to them and try to bring the best show that we can. I'm Emilio A. Colon, and this is the EAC show coming to you from sunny South Florida. I have Marcus Smack with me on the sound. Yep, yep. I have Omar Blanco on video, Omar's first day. Let's give him a round of applause. What up, what up? <laughs> and I have my son Emilio Jr. in the back as well. Usually I have our UCF activist, sports enthusiast, the big one, Cameron, dinner with me. But Cameron this weekend had to actually go to a wedding, so he got his dancing shoes on. But Cameron will be back with us next week. Um, try to put the best show together for you today on the list of shows. Omar, tell me what we got going on today. On uh, today's show, we're going to be uh, going over the XFL previewing the times and uh, the best channel to watch them on. Uh, also, we're going to be discussing the Houston Astros press conference and uh, controversial uh, cheating that's uh, been going on. And also, we're going to recap the NBA uh, All-Star Weekend in Chicago. So with the XFL games, the XFL games this weekend, we've been talking about XFL in this show all week. With the XFL games we have on Saturday, we have the New York Guardians versus the DC Defenders. And uh, you can watch that on ABC at 2 o'clock. And the D.C. Defenders are minus 7 in that game. And the over-under in the game is over 47. I said I'm going to go with the D.C. Defenders. I feel like they're going to cover that spread. Um, my co-host Cameron also agreed with me. He said the D.C. Defenders will also co cover the spread in that game. The second game on Saturday is at 5 o'clock. You can catch that on Fox. It's going to be the Tampa Bay Vipers versus the Seattle Dragons. The Tampa Bay Vipers are favored minus two and a half. I went with the Vipers and Cameron went with the Dragons. The over-under in that game is 48. And then on Sunday, you got the Seattle Battlehawks versus the Houston Roughnecks. And that game is minus seven and a half. The Roughnecks are the favorite. The over-under is 49. And you can catch that on FS1. And then you got the Dallas Renegades, minus three and a half. The over-under is 48 against the LA Wildcats at 3 p.m. on ABC. I really do feel like with the DC Defenders, literally on paper and on the screen, they show that they look like the best team in the XFL just after one week. Um, I think the New York Guardians are really going to do a really good job of trying to keep and stay in the game. But I think just based off of what I've seen, I think the DC Defenders end up taking that game and winning that game handily, maybe by 10 points, actually. With the Tampa Bay Vipers, the Tampa Bay Vipers showed me a lot in game one. And... I feel like they're going to cover the spread, even though they have to go across the country to play the Seattle Dragons. Uh, I think Jerry Glanville did a great job of keeping a balanced attack offensively. Um, they ran the ball well. They threw the ball well. And they played okay defensively. I just think Aaron Murray just needs to do a better job of cutting down on the mistakes and it'll give the Tampa Bay Vipers a chance. Uh, the Dallas Renegades and the LA Wildcats. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I went with Dallas because of Stoops. That's the real reason why I chose the Dallas Renegades. I hope they come through for me, but I can easily see the L.A. Wildcats winning that game. But I personally went with the uh, Dallas Renegades, and, and my co-host Cameron went with the L.A. Wildcats. And um, the Seattle Battlehawks versus the Houston Roughnecks. The Seattle Battlehawks. Cameron took the battle hawk. Oh, sorry, no. In that in that earlier phrase, me and Cameron are on the same page when it came to the Dallas Renegades. I apologize about that. Uh, Cameron ended up taking the Seattle Battle Hawks, and I ended up taking the Houston Roughnecks in the last game, and that's minus seven and a half with the over under forty nine. See, uh, St. Louis didn't show me enough in that first game. Defensively, they did, but they didn't show me enough offensively, and I feel like the Houston Roughnecks can score points. And the line pretty much dictate, dictates that with the minus seven and a half spread that they're favored in that game. Um, I also do feel like that Jordan Taamu, who is the quarterback for the Seattle Battlehawks, if he gets opportunities, he can create with his feet, but 
he's going to have to show with his arm that he can really prove that he can sling it down the field. And I think the Houston Roughnecks uh, defensively are really good, and they're going to you know, shut them down pretty much in a sense. So that's why the score or the line is minus 7.5 in that game. Um, also, I'm so excited about more of the stuff that's going to come out with the XFL, the fan interaction, the, the boof review, the kickoffs, and all the excitement that's been generated by that league. I'm definitely 100% looking forward to watching all of the games and then actually speaking on all of the games the following week when we uh, come back and do the show on Monday. Um, also, a little bit of what we saw on social media. There's a couple of injuries here and there for each team. I don't think any of those injuries are too, too, too significant. But I think all of the games will literally be exciting. They'll be fun to watch once again. And we'll be able to enjoy football for another week, which is a bonus because all of us love football. Now, before I end up going into um, my MLB talk, there is a follower on our social media page. And her username is she underscore lifts with two eyes. And she goes by the name of Lexi. And the reason why we're shouting out Lexi during this show is because Lexi plays professional women's football for the DC Divas in the Women's Football Alliance League, which is a league I knew nothing about until we started this show, and she ends up following us on Instagram. And I want to give a shout-out to Lexi and all of her teammates because they're literally grinding, practicing, and playing a sport that we all love to watch without any recognition or credit. So I wanted to take the time out and we say we appreciate you for sharing the same love and dedication to the sport that we enjoy watching. Thank you so much, Lexi. I appreciate it. And to everybody that plays for the Women Football Alliance as well. So now, Omar, what's next on the subject? Next, we're going to be uh, discussing uh, the MLB Houston Astros press conference and the uh, uh, controversial cheating scandal. For all those that follow us on social media, there's an EAC Sportsman on our Instagram page. And the EAC Sportsman, I addressed it a little bit. By the way, did you guys see Cameron today? Post the story on the social media page. Did you see Cameron today, Omar? Yeah, he looked good. He, he looked, looked, looked good, good on the social media page. He was all he, clean. He had his tux on. Yeah, yeah, he had his suit on. He looked good. But uh, on the EAC Sports Minute, I, I express a little bit of frustration about how these players are being put out to dry by the Houston Ag Astros organization, in my opinion. I feel like the PR people for the Houston Astros did a very, very piss poor job when it came to preparing these athletes for what was a firestorm. Because that's exactly what happened after they apologized and said sorry for the cheating scandal. Let me be clear. and Let me state this for the record. It's being done. It's been done. The cheating has been done. The Houston Astros just went above and beyond the limit. They used, they used technology so good that they were like, yo, this is just unfair. You know, I saw something today late that Kurt Suzuki, who was the catcher for the Washington Nationals, was sitting there saying that they were changing their signs every batter because they knew the Houston Astros were cheating. So the reason why the Houston Astros cheated is because they didn't wake up one morning and just sit there and say, oh, you know what, today's the day I'm going to decide to start cheating. No, because everybody else was doing it. They just did it a lot better. Now, in order for us as a whole to get over this, we have to get over it. The media is going to depict, people are going to talk, people are going to say what they want to say, that's fine. You're entitled to say your opinion all day long. But in order to actually enjoy the game, we need the game to come. I need to see a guy get behind home plate, put a one down, and throw a strike, a fastball. Two down, throw, throw a curveball. Three down, throw a slider. Four, throw a changeup. Let's move on already. You guys just want to literally hold on and bash the Houston Astros all day. They're going to prove it on the field whether the cheating was countable, or whether it was credible or not. Altuve, if he bats 340 again, what are you going to say now? If Bregman doesn't bat 290, what are you going to say now? If Correa can't hit over 300, what are you going to say now? The play is going to dictate whether or not these guys really did benefit off the cheating or not. And we need to see this actually happen. They want to find these guys guilty. You know, they apologize already. They're sorry for their mistakes. Let them be. Let them, let them go on. Let them do what they have to do. Let them play the game. And, and, and let's just enjoy it. It's a great sport. They made mistakes. Let's move on. Stop lingering so much over this controversy. While I get it, I understand it. Everybody's upset. Yankee fans are vividly mad because they feel like they were cheated out of a World Series. 
I I don't disagree with you, Yankee fans. You probably were cheated out of a World Series, but there's absolutely nothing you can do about it anymore. Nothing. Nothing. What do you want? You want people to start looking into maybe, oh, maybe the Yankees were cheating and that's why the Astros were cheating? No. No one wants that anymore. Let's just move on. Let's just get back to playing baseball and enjoying the sport that we all love. Also, on that note, I also want to discuss about baseball in a whole. The sport, Cameron and I had a discussion last show about innovative ways to speed up the game and also like connecting with the fans. There is something that, that, that Major League Baseball has and no other sports have, and it's called BAM. And BAM literally controls everything from a social media standpoint to a, a redistribution. Like, literally, you cannot get content onto YouTube about baseball unless you rip it from MLB. If you rip it, like, on some, like, I'm just going to take it off my phone or whatever it may be, Yo, you might get a cease and desist letter to take it down or they just might automatically take it off YouTube themselves because they control everything. So that's why baseball is so far behind when it comes to doing what they need to do with the fans, interacting with the fans. So unless you're ripping video from MLB TV or from a paid uh, um, subscription that you have with your um, direct TV or your cable company, it's going to disappear. Whereas in basketball... No one really cares. Whereas in football, no one really cares. No one cares about what they're doing with the content. They just care the fact that the content is getting out to the people. MLB has such a stranglehold on it because the owners make so much money off this thing called BAM. Like, in order for a team or in order for a sponsor of a team to utilize the team's logo in the actual uh, uh, IG post or Facebook post or whatever it may be, you got to go get permission from MLB to do it. Like, it has to go, it has to get approved. That's why they're all backwards, because they're so closed door behind all of this stuff in order to get content out to people and, 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 and to, to touch the fan base that they really need to touch. And that's just my opinion when it comes to Major League Baseball. Now, I got to get into this promo real quick, and this part of the show is brought to you by ElCubanoSandwichShop.com. Use the promo code EAC. And receive discounts on online pickups or deliveries. Enjoy a cafe con leche or a natural pre-workout shot of Cuban coffee to start the day. Daily lunch specials and their steak sandwiches off the chain. Once again, use the promo code EAC. That's ElCubanoSandwichShop.com or 954-906-5110. Remember, use the promo code EAC. Back to a little bit about baseball. I'm looking so forward to opening day. Baseball is my favorite sport. Hands down, my favorite sport. I mean, just knowing how everything is going to be with this sport this year. The Yankees wanting to prove everybody wrong. Like, you guys cheated. I This is our World Series. And the Dodgers feeling cheated in the same way. And people complaining about contracts or trades or... People saying that the 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 um, new tax threshold is kind of like a luxury tax threshold is like limiting teams in order to go out and sign free agents. Where you got the situation in Colorado and you got the situation in Chicago. Owners are owners. They're always going to do what they want to do. There's a difference between billionaires and millionaires. The millionaires can sit there and complain all they want, but the billionaires are going to do whatever they want when it comes down to it at the end of the day, because they are the owners of the team. They're the ones that decide you can play for me or you can't play for me. I'll invest in you. I don't invest in you. You can't really get mad all of a sudden for owners treating players like commodity because players are assets. That's just facts. They invest millions and millions of dollars in you because you're going to allow them to make millions and millions of more dollars than they're paying you. It's that simple. It's not hard. As long as you have a full understanding of that, you'll be perfectly fine. Enjoy the fact that whatever salary that you end up getting, if you feel like that, that, that you're not worth that, you have an agent. Let him yell and scream all day long at the GM and the owners. That's his job. That's what you pay him, your 5%, your 2.5%, whatever it is you pay him. Let him go tell them how you feel. You want an extension? Let him bark up that tree. Don't like it? Ask for a trade. We only live one life. We only live one life. Do I knock any player for getting that money? Absolutely not. In any sport. Get paid. You have a family to feed. But don't get mad when you sign a contract. 
and all of a sudden you can't get out of it because you signed one too early. You, that, that's what you signed up for. So you can't necessarily get mad at the team for staying on that contract. I'm looking forward to seeing if Mike Trout can finally make the playoffs. It's very sad that the best player probably of all time has only been to the playoffs once. I'm looking forward to seeing whether my team, the New York Mets, can actually make some type of run and not disappoint me every year like they have been. I'm also looking forward to seeing if Bryce Harper and the Philadelphia Phillies will literally live up to their expectations because they have a really good team. The Washington Nationals could defend their title. Um, in the American League, the Yankees always reign supreme. It's crazy. They just, I don't care what anybody says. They're just a really good team. It's just, you, it, it just they're just like the Patriots almost in a sense. But they're above the Patriots because they have more championships. But they're just like the Patriots. You can't knock them really. I mean, you could dislike them, but you can't knock them. Boston is literally just sh shredding payroll. Toronto got a bunch of young guns up there. Toronto, they're going to be exciting. They got so many young kids. It's really good. We can go into the Central. St. Louis is always St. Louis. St. Louis is always a staple when it comes to baseball. The Pirates are cellar dwellers. The Cubs, let's see what kind of Cubs team you get. And Milwaukee, Milwaukee's always good. Milwaukee's always good. In the American League Central, you end up getting the Minnesota Twins. Most likely they're going to win that division. Um, you got the Kansas City Royals there at the bottom. I don't think the Chicago White Sox aren't going to do too much. Maybe. Maybe they proved me wrong. Um, who else am I forgetting in that, in that division? You got the White Sox. You got the Brewers. You got um, the White Sox, Brewers. I'm having like a brain fart right now. The Twins. I'm missing somebody. Detroit Tigers. Oh, Detroit Tigers coming in last place. Forget that. They're coming in last place over there. And then you got the West where you got Oakland. Oakland is a good team. They're always a good team with the limited funds that they have. The Angels. Um, Omar, let me know if I forgot somebody in the Central. I don't remember. Um, Oakland, the Angels, Seattle. And then um, who's the last team in the West? I'm on dead air right now. Texas. Texas, thank you. I appreciate that. Texas. So, I mean, the Angels could definitely win that. Between Angels and Oakland, in my opinion, I don't see Seattle and Texas doing anything. Then obviously you got the Dodgers in the National League and you got San Francisco. San Francisco's probably gonna be a losing team this year. Colorado's gonna be a losing team this year. It's just gonna be Arizona and the Dodgers. Yeah, we'll see. Baseball is just it's right around the corner. It's gonna be so enjoyable to watch. I'm very, very looking forward to it. And um we'll see what happens in Major League Baseball, honestly. Oh, sugar honey ice tea. It's the EAC show. <laughs> Omar, tell us what's the next topic of the day. Uh, next topic, we're going to be discussing the games, the NBA games from last night and the upcoming NBA All-Star Weekend. Omar, did you see any of those games yesterday? Um, I didn't catch both of them. I ended up catching just the uh, Celtics and Clippers game. That was that was kind of a wild game. Um, I saw Tatum had a 39. He was going nuts that's last game, night. That, that's game two. Game one was Oklahoma City versus New Orleans Pelicans, Oklahoma, ended up winning that game. Gallinari ended up having a really good game. He ended up having like 29 points, I believe. Yeah, 29. And then uh, Zion had 32 and, 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 and six rebounds. 32? That, that's a career high for him, isn't it? Yeah. But let me explain something to you. Zion, even in a losing effort, is what to watch. Like, hmm. nobody's really tuning in to see Chris Paul or nobody's tuning in to see Gallinari. Nobody, it don't matter if New Orleans wins or loses. It's irrelevant. Like, that kid is worth the price of admission. He really is. Like, I'm telling you right now, I mean, as expensive as going to an NBA game is, he's worth every dollar. He is big-time superstar stardom. The NBA literally needs to put his face on a huge poster and just plaster it everywhere they can because he is worth it. Literally, he's that good. I'm t every time I watch him, I'm afraid he's going to pop out, out of his sneaker. Like I'm serious. I think I think it's gonna be so bad for Jordan if he does that. Like he's just literally gonna pop out a sneaker again. Yeah, that's not gonna be a good look for Jordan. You think he's gonna be? You think he's gonna be uh, uh better than Bron Bron? No, no. Lebron. Nah. I mean, <laughs> he's just a different beast. Lebron is just a different animal. I, you know what? Not for nothing. A lot of people don't appreciate Lebron James' greatness. Lebron James is great. He's just not great the way people want him to be. Like right. want him to be. Like people always comparing him to Michael Jordan and all this type of stuff. LeBron is LeBron. LeBron is LeBron. He's not Michael. He's never going to be Michael. So stop comparing him. 
Yeah, that that's that's a dumb comparison, man. They play. I don't two even know why people do that. That's like that's like comparing Michael Jackson to Prince. Like it's not it's not even close. Not even. It's, they're not even the same animal. Like leave them alone. Like let them be their great ones the way they are, and that's it. No one sits there and says, "Oh, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson." Like they leave it alone. They're individuals. Just leave it at that. You don't have to compare the two. They're both greats. But um, the second game was. The Boston Celtics versus the Clippers, and in that game, um, <laughs> Paul George got hurt in the second quarter. Oh, he left with a hamstring injury. Yeah, something was, like yeah, that. Hamstring. But what I was most impressed with is even with him leaving, the Clippers had multiple opportunities to win that game. They should have won the game. Lou Will had a three pointer, controversial three pointer, called back. Oh, that was that was definitely controversial. I mean, it looked like he was uh, coming across. And, and shooting in his motion while he got motion. fouled. It's shooting motion. They but. deemed the foul on the floor. And, I mean, Gordon Hayward was trying to preach that he hit him on the floor. I mean, that's that's all judgmental. It's not really that big of a deal. But even without Paul George, Kawhi Leonard is that dude because he was literally keeping the Los Angeles Clippers in that game. Tatum had an amazing game, though. Tatum had 39, and he just went off. Yeah, he, he looked was, like the best was. player on the court. But I'm just really impressed with how Kawhi Leonard plays so good on both sides of the floor. Both sides of the floor. Now, the Clippers are struggling, as um, as Cameron stated in our EAC Sports Minute earlier today. They have lost three out of the last four games. Mm. So, and I, I agree with Cam, uh, Cameron. Uh, you shouldn't panic. They're still going to be a really good team because I saw it last night that without one of their superstars, they're still able to compete on a very, very high level against a very good Boston Celtics team. Yeah, man, that boy uh, Lenny, man. But not for nothing, Lou Williams, he he held it down last night. He did. He, he scored 35, but it took him 33 <laughs> shots to score 35 points. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot he, of he shots. Made them, he made them win when it counted. And then and when you the take end. Lou Williams and you put Lou Williams in the starting lineup, you li- you take away from your bench. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then you're not getting as much bench production as you do normally. So that's a little bit, you know, discouraging. But, I mean, right now it's all, man- all hands on deck, and Los Angeles Kippers got to do what they got to do. Um, I know we were going to talk about about the NBA All Star Game, but I don't want to talk about the dunk contest. <laughs> Omar, don't waste I mean, my time. I don't want to talk they, about. They the, still have the dunk contest. I don't want to <laughs> talk about the dunk contest. It's just like I will watch the skills competition. I will watch the three point shootout, but the dunk contest is like it's just I, a circus show. I don't even know who's in it. Man, you talking? I mean, you can't I don't even it. know who's in it. I have no idea who's in it. I can't tell you. But the three point contest, my picks for the three point contest. Are either Trey or Harris? Who you think is gonna win? I mean, Trey. He's been he's been he's been really uh, showing out. Um, I like his form, so I mean, I'm gonna go with Trey on this one. Nah, I'm taking the defending champ. <laughs> I'm t- I'm going I'm going with Harris. I'm going with the defending champ. And you know what? If you're a gambling man, they're they're plus money for both of them. They're both at four fifty, and I think those are the best odds because you know Harris is the defending champ and Trey's just a shooter. He shoots all day long. Um. Who else do you got? Do you have Team Giannis or do you have Team LeBron? Uh, I'm I'm looking at the lineups now, man, and I don't know what Giannis was thinking when he was choosing his team, but LeBron looks like he has. He has I'm gonna tell you. Ex- I'm gonna tell you exactly what Giannis was thinking. He was like, "Yo, I'm a I'm gonna kill him." <laughs> he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna kill him." I'm he has the shooters. He has I'm, shooters. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna literally put up points all day long. I'm just gonna kill him. I mean, granted, his you know his front court or his his sorry his back court is small because he has what Kimba Walker and Trey Young. On his squad, he has no. He has. Uh, let me see where his team is. He has Kimba Walker and Trey Young. Yeah, he does. Kimba Walker and Trey Young. Yeah, his, yeah. His, that's his back court. But I still think they end up coming out with the victory. Um, I also am looking forward to seeing Damian Lillard perform at halftime. Even though he's <laughs> even though he's not in the actual All Star game because he pulled out because of an injury, uh, Devin Booker ends up taking his place and it's well deserved. I don't even know why Devin Booker wasn't in the All Star game in the first place. I feel like I mean, that's like a slap in the face not to put Devin Booker in there. Yeah, I mean he he's he's definitely uh you know uh, a talent and he got he got game. He definitely got game. But um, to to speak on Damian Lillard, he's actually a good rapper. <laughs> 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 I, I'm I like Shaq better. I'm gonna go Shaq? with Shaq. Shaq the Shaq's personality, man, is just he's he's all world. Shaq does it all. Shaq is on Icy Hot, the general commercials, ring doorbell. Like Shaq is a jack of all trades. Shaq is Shaq is what a lot of people 
end up wanting to be in life. He's a yeah. superstar brand. Yeah, yeah. Like literally, literally he is yeah. a superstar brand. Multiple businesses, multiple. <laughs> He has, he has it all, man. He's killing he's, it, killing and he's it. He's still doing the show, killing he's still it, still doing the show. I just hope that the All Star Game is very competitive. I hope they bring that mama mentality to the All Star Game. For sure, right. um, I think they will. I really do think they will. I like the little gesture that the um, they're gonna do something special, right? For like to commemorate them. Yeah, they they put a they put a patch on the NBA jerseys with the number two and the number twenty four, and then um, the nine stars for the for the nine the, victims. Yeah, for the nine victims right. that passed away, and then they have the stripe. Or the, the the black stripe across the jersey to commemorate the passing of David Stern, the former commissioner of the NBA. Right. Um, rest in peace. To yeah, rest, rest in peace boss. to everybody involved. I'm just looking forward to seeing a really good skills competition and three point shootout and all star game. You can eliminate the dunk contest. Put a three on three in there or something like that. Do some big, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do some like yeah. three, big three some, competition uh, um, or something. Yeah, some uh, street ball court or something like that. Three on three on the street court. Something, something, something else. Let's 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 just let's just move on from that because in all actuality, it's like the dunk contest. Yeah, is really, there's only that. so many dunks that you can do. Well, this part of the show is brought to you by El Cubano Sandwich Shop dot com. Use the promo code EAC and receive discounts on online pickups or deliveries. Enjoy a cafe con leche or a natural pre workout shot of Cuban coffee to start your day. Their daily lunch specials and their steak sandwich is next level. Once again, use the promo code EAC. That's El Cubano Sandwich Shop dot com or 954-906-5110. Remember, use the promo code EAC. Well, that concludes episode three of the EAC show. Make sure you check us out on so all social media platforms on Instagram and on Facebook with the EAC show and on Twitter with EAC show. Make sure you look us up on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. And we appreciate it. Marcus Mack hey. on the video. Omar Blanco. Yes, sir. Emilio Jr., I love you. Appreciate you guys. Check you out next episode. Peace. Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. Mm.